Hello, my beautifully scented friends. Welcome back to my world of fragrance. I don't categorize myself as a purist of very many things. I wouldn't say I'm an amber purist. I wouldn't say I'm a vanilla purist or anything like that, but rose, I can absolutely say that I am a rose purist. That means that rose in its purest form without any fluff, without any other notes involved, is just dandy for me. <laughs> I looked through all of my rose fragrances and I realized that there are so many that I have and so many out there that I love as well. So I thought that I would split up the rose theme even though I would love to do like five videos in a row just on roses. I'm going to condense this one and focus on pure rose perfumes. Rose patchouli, rose oud, uh, rose combinations, things like that are going to be in future videos, so you have something to look forward to. And so let us focus on the rose purest perfumes. The fragrance for me that opened my eyes to my obsession with rose was Catherine by L'Occitane back when they used to make it. I think that this fragrance is discontinued, but this was a bunch of luscious garden roses thrown all together. It was like in bunches and bunches. And this fragrance just, you know, made me realize that rose is something that I absolutely enjoy in perfume. And it seems to be something that people sometimes shy away from because rose tends to maybe be linked to being a little bit more mature. So a lot of the younger, like teen bopper fragrances don't really contain rose for that reason. And it doesn't have to be that way, you know? I feel like a lot of younger people shy away from admitting that they actually do love the rose. So love the rose and love it proudly. Another fragrance that's in a similar realm to Catherine is Tea Rose, and this one's by Perfumers Workshop. It's a, I think it's a cult classic. Like it's a go-to cult classic because it is an affordable rose and it is exactly how the name describes it. It's a tea rose. This is, you're out in a fancy garden and everyone is drinking a cup of tea in a beautiful English cup with their pinkies up. And that is the scent of basically tea rose for me. It's a very pretty rose fragrance and it's a good, straightforward, uh, fresh rose. We will get on to the darker roses, the more crimson roses, but right now we're at the fresher roses. And this is a nice, light, uh, innocent take on the rose and it's also affordable, so it's a great option. So one thing that I love about the rose is that it has some antidepressant qualities. If you feel the sensation of standing in a garden and putting your nose up against a beautiful, luscious, fresh rose, I mean, come on, that's gonna uplift you, isn't it? Not to mention the aphrodisiac qualities of the rose. So yeah, there is something to be said about the rose being called the queen of the flowers. So another fresh rose that I really enjoy is A La Rose by Maison Francis Kyojan. But the thing is with this one, um, it's marketed towards women. They've added something to try to make it feminine. If you are looking for a rose that is more what a rose is, which is a rose is unisex, you know? <laughs> what does a rose smell like? A rose can't smell like a man or a woman. The rose itself, has this depth to it that can also be described as masculine. But I digress. A la rose is meant to be somewhat of a feminine rose. It is fresh, it is lively. We are still in the fresh realm over here. But personally, if I were to go out and purchase a rose from MFK today, I would go for L'Homme a la rose because I just feel like it's more realistic. Um, I do also have the L'Eau a la rose by MFK. And I will say that I actually prefer the L'eau à la rose because I'm looking for delicate in this sense. The L'eau is just that tad bit more delicate, more rose watery um, than à la rose. But that depends on your taste, your strength, how much you want your fragrance to give off a feminine vibe or not. But yeah, these are very beautiful ones from MFK. The types of roses that are usually used in perfume are Bulgarian rose, Damask Rose and the Centifolia Rose, which is uh, from the south of France. But I think that to the naked nose, it's something that is hard to decipher. The type of rose that I would say stands out the most or is the most different is the Taif Rose. I found that the Taif Rose has this kind of prickly edge to it um, that's quite interesting. But these are mainly the Centifolia rose from the south of France. At least they're trying to smell like it. Now we have a rose fragrance that 
is rose interpreted in the lens of a powdery 80s fragrance. This one is also cult rose fragrance. It's uh, by Jean-Charles Brousseau. It comes in this pretty iconic bottle. I mean, you see this bottle and you know this fragrance, if you know it <laughs> to begin with. But this one is, like I said, it's in the lens of powdery. It's classy though. It's it's not 80s hairspray crazy. This is actually 80s prim and proper, if that makes sense. Every time that I wear this fragrance, I feel like it should be worn by some Indian bride wearing, you know, beautiful jewels that match her sari. It's like, uh, it's like that saying, what's it called? A lady in the streets, but a freak in the sheets. Yeah, that's what this is. <laughs> this is like prim and proper to the outside world, but then you got a little bit of edge underneath there. You got a little bit of naughtiness there because you're pulling off a strong rose, okay? This is definitely a more done up rose. It's not like, you know, you just put some rose petals on yourself or anything. This is like rose and you've taken it and you've powderized it and you've made it kind of like face powder. It could be as well, interpreted that way. Um, but yeah, this is a nice cosmetic -y rose if you are into that. Also, if you're feeling super fancy, you can use the Parfum, which I also have. And I really enjoy just the ritual of dabbing this onto my pulse points. And you can layer this underneath the other one for more lasting effect as well. So this is like a nice boudoir uh, pure rose, I would say. Now the next fragrance to me is synonymous with rose. I can't think of rose without thinking of this fragrance. And to me this is rose in the height of its life. It's rose in the richest form. The rose is uh, not pink and pretty and petally. It is, you know, it's strong. It's showing its strength. It is deep in color. It is rich. And this fragrance is Naima by Guerlain from 79. I wouldn't say that this fragrance um, necessarily needs to in your head smell like it's from 79 because it is basically just the most beautiful luscious rose on top of rose and the rose here is a little bit fruity it's accented a little bit so it can go a little bit jammy to your nose for me I have a whole visualization in my head <laughs> when I smell this fragrance so I just picture the most gorgeous, like the largest rose of the bunch is Naima, even though tons and tons of roses were put into uh, creating this just to create one drop of rose oil takes hundreds of roses, right? Assuming <laughs> that this would be with real rose oil. Of course, rose oil is very expensive. So, um, but Naima smells like the real deal. It really does smells fabulous. Um, if you are looking for a rose oil that is deep and crimson, then definitely try out Naima. Naima is composed around the Bulgarian rose, and the Bulgarian rose is probably, because it is the most widespread type of rose that you smell in perfumery, it's, it's that go-to rose, you know, when you think of how a rose smells, it is most likely the Bulgarian rose that your nose is accustomed to. So it's just a beautiful, unveiling of that straightforward rose and ooh, this smells like a queen smells like a queen another wonderful interpretation of the rose is sa majesté la rose by serge lutens and this one is a marvelous rendition of a realistic rose although the rose here is the moroccan rose it has that lutens-esque moroccan vibe of being in a dry surrounding um and the rose here is accented with a little hint of honey so this one is another very realistic rose i would say that sa majesté la rose is even more uh neutral in terms of it doesn't come across with any type of gender and it's yeah it's a marvelous marvelous rose the first time that i smelled this one and every time that i smell this one i'm just like <sighs> poetry <laughs> So now we have a rose around the Rosa Centifolia, which is um, the one from the south of France. And it is called Rose de Mai, so basically it's the same rose. Um, and this one is by Peri Monte Carlo. And I just adore this brand for realistic florals. All of their florals I find to be amazingly realistic. They're mimosa, they're jasmine, they're Rose de Mai. They also have a Taif rose as well. 
but I love the Rose de May because this one reminds me of the truest form of a rose spritz that you would use, like a spa-like rose thing, a water basically with rose petals inside it, but more condensed in perfume form so that, you know, you can smell <laughs> of this for longer than maybe five minutes. So Rose de May is just fantastic. I really find that this smells like the distilled rose petals. It has that rose e evaporating wateriness, that, that luscious wateriness though. For me, this is like the spa rose that I go to when I want that moment of wusa, then I absolutely reach for this one. So it's a nice option and also definitely check out their Taif rose as well. They also have that in an extrait form, which is marvelous with their oud if you like mixing your rose and oud. But we'll talk about rose oud in another video, okay? <laughs> so rose de me, fantastic, fantastic most realistic rose de may I've ever found. Now we are going to more sensual roses. And when it comes to rose, you find that the roses that are deeper in color and maybe have some woods incorporated in there are characterized as unisex or masculine roses. That depends on your interpretation. But uh, Rose Barbare is one of my later editions of roses. I think it's my latest rose edition by Guerlain. Wow, I have another Guerlain in here. I usually don't have that many Guerlains in my videos because I like to diversify the brands that I speak about. But Rose Barbare is an unusual rose because although this is a sweetened rose, it doesn't necessarily have to be a feminine rose. You know what I mean? It is uh, sweetened by honey and there's also an edge of fenugreek in this fragrance that adds a little twist to it. So this rose is like hiding deep inside the thorns. This one makes me think of um, Sleeping Beauty where, you know, the castle is like covered with thorns and roses and all of that. And that is Rose Baba. <laughs> yeah, this is another depth, depthful, lively rose. Um, but still isn't too heavy, you know? It, it manages to still be beautifully wearable um, and just doesn't drench you. Um, but we are going to go into some deeper rows. So this one is a cult classic. It is Stella by Stella McCartney. And I think it's the EDP that I have. They have the EDT and the EDP. This one is a rose with depth. So this one actually used to be slightly sexier than it is today. It, it is that, oh, that alluring, sensual, playing on the aphrodisiac side of the rose. But personally, I think with that slight woody depth that you have here and slight sensual amberiness that you have in here as well, I think that this could actually be fabulous on a gentleman, if I do say so myself. Um, this is, you know, a cult followed fragrance. It is one that I've had people in my office wear as their signatures. And it's for me a head turner. It's one of those fragrances that you just know, you know it very well, um, but you never get bored of it. I never get bored of smelling Stella. So that is another great rose option. Um, I feel like the sillage of this one becomes kind of musky as well. So this does have that kind of intoxicating trail, <laughs> if you will, but Stella, love it. So if you're looking for a realistic rose with its stems, a little bit uh, earthy in there as well, definitely on the gender neutral spectrum, then Une Rose by Frédéric Mal is a marvelous choice. Uplifting rose and geranium with that tiny little uh, injection of the woodiness to match the earthiness makes this rose an outstanding one. And now we're going to round off with the maturest of roses, not in the sense of who would wear it, but in the sense of the lifespan of the rose. We've been through the young roses, garden fresh, the height of the rose, the rose in full bloom, uh, the queen of roses, and then now we are in the rose that is in its last stages of its life. And this is Love Kills by Mask Milano. This one to me always reminds me of the dark, deep red crimson rose in the Phantom of the Opera that's 
laying there in the snow. It hasn't been forgotten, but the rose is pondering. The rose has been through some things. It has been through life and now it is left to lay there and live out its final stages. And so <laughs> Love Kills is exactly that. It is the deepest, the darkest um, of these roses that I have here. It has that sensuality of being that more mature, dark, dominant rose and it still manages to be hyper realistic as well, which is what I love about this. This is around the Turkish rose. I wouldn't say that when I smell rose perfumes, I can tell right away what type of rose it is or anything like that. But once you do hear it, you kind of go, ah, yeah, I can see how that could be their Turkish rose. It's the power of suggestion, I guess. Um, but love kills. And like a good Mas Milano lasts a very long time as well. So yeah, there we are. We kind of have gone through the evolution of the roses and I hope that you enjoyed today's video. Please let me know what your favorite pure rose perfumes are out there. This video is just focused on the rose purists, the core of the rose and perfumery, which ah, I am obsessed with. <laughs> And so I look forward to yeah hearing all of your notes. Let's discuss in the comments and I will see you in my next video. Thank you for watching.